What's going on guys, King Strats here back in the video on the channel and today this place looks so good, completely random. I was in Westwood, New Jersey because I wanted to go to another Trader Joe's location and when I was there, as I got all my stuff, I said, you know what, is there something around here that I can just get real quick? I drive around the block and I see this place. It's called 1950 Original, located in Westwood, New Jersey. I knew nothing about this place going in, but I saw they serve burgers, hot dogs, and fries, kind of like one of those old school diners, drive-in dives kind of joint. So went in there, used the kiosk, and I basically got one of each thing on the menu. So there are four different types of hot dogs and they serve burgers, hot dogs, and fries. That's really it. So I got a burger and I got their four specialty dogs as well as some chili and cheese for the fries. One thing I noticed right away, their fries and their hot dogs are deep fried in beef tallow, which is completely different. Beef tallow is beef lard, beef fat. So I expect flavor to be good. Drop a thumbs up, man. You guys already know the vibes, man. What? I'm just so excited. So let's just, I'm not even going to, there's no, I'm going to go right into this burger. We got a double cheeseburger. Now this is a smash burger. You can see the crust on this bad boy when I open it up. So there's the crust on the burger. Get my face out of here. There you go. There's the crust on the burger and it comes with like a sauce. I forgot the name of the sauce as well as these onions. They're marinated in something. I don't, I didn't want to look because I wanted to know. And then just cheese, meat, pickles if you're insane. And that's it. That's a good ass burger. The smash burger just has such a nice crust on it. The onions. They taste almost pickled. There's a vinegary kind of spice to them. And each patty, mm, you can tell it's just very, very seasoned. There's not a lot going on in this burger, but in this case, it's a good thing because it's so well executed. I see what they were going for with the 1950. It's kind of no frills, but seasoned very well. Potato. That's not Toretto. Potato bun, which is to me, one of the best buns that you can get when you're going with this kind of burger. Mm hmm right. I'm gonna tell you what. A very good burger. Very good. Very good. I want to keep eating it. I'm going to take another bite. What really takes this over the top, though, these onions, there are a ton of them, and they are really fresh. Like, it's not like some, everything you can tell is handmade. That is fantastic. I'm going to give that a 9.3 out of 10. Off of that burger alone, I would go back just for that. Price-wise, a double cheeseburger is $9. Their cheapest one, which is just a hamburger, is $6. So, not bad price, considering it's in Westwood. If you know, you know. Westwood, so, not bad. Let's try these fries. Fries cost $4.50. Again, they're cooked in beef tallow, and there's not much going on else. They're just salted. But beef tallow should really give these things a nice flavor. Again. This is just no frills, well executed. Because of the beef tallow, it reminds me of old McDonald's fries. When I say old McDonald's fries, I mean fries from when I was a kid back in the 90s. If you don't know, they used to use beef tallow when they made their fries. It's what made them so good. They don't need more, they don't have the same taste, but these are perfectly salted. And if they're not hand cut, you got a good fry distributor. I like those fries a lot. Now I did get, some of their chili on the side. I didn't want to put it on the fries. You can get chili cheese fries, but I didn't want to put it on there. So this is their homemade chili. Mmm. A little bit of spice to it. Maybe some cayenne, like some hot sauce. There's definitely ground beef in here, but it's ground up so fine that there's no chunks. It's like almost whipped, but... Goes well with the beef tallow and the fries and everything, and we can go in here for some of this cheese sauce. Cheese Whiz-esque. I'm not the biggest fan of Cheese Whiz. That's the first thing where I'm just like, eh, but not necessarily bad. 
just not my first choice. Now, I'm just going to try to go in for and do a chili cheese fry. It goes well with everything, though. Fries, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Chili, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. And this, I, I just, again, I don't really like cheese Whiz. Not that I'm not going to eat it. I'll give it 5 out of 10. So they have a lot of different kinds of hot dogs with their customization. They have an all pork and an all beef hot dog. You can get it regular or you can get it well done. And then they have about five or six different toppings like sauerkraut, onions, relish, mustard, chili that you can put on their hot dogs. But I got their four specialty dogs. They have three that look like permanent menu fixtures. And from what I saw, they have one that's only available until March 30th which is a specialty one. And that is this one right here. This is a bangers and mash. They call it a bangers and mash up hot dog. So, which is a popular British dish consisting of a sausage with a potato, like a mashed potato. So they did that on here and they added different toppings. I don't know if you can get that. Yeah, you can look off to the side. There's peas on this as well. And underneath some sort of, what is that? I gotta try this. This thing's massive. <laughs> Look at that. Massive. This actually tastes British. Not me that in a bad way, but for I know people, people get. The mashed potatoes are red potatoes. And they're whipped really fine with a little bit of garlic. And then there's some crispy fried onions on the top with these peas. Very interesting. What I am tasting though, this, I don't know if I can get that on my finger. Move my hand, there we go. Though I looked it up and inside of here is like a beer infused gravy. So that beer taste is on there. It's not overpowering, but there is a bit much just for me. I like this, but again, it's just like a cool concept of a dog, and it's good, but I think it's even for me just a little too out of the realm of stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. It's so well executed, and it tastes just, you know, the taste things don't really jive with me. I do really like the bacon cheddar mash on that, too. Like, I would get it again. If I did, I would just get it without that beer thing. It just throws me off just a little bit, but I'll give that a 7 out of 10. Hot dog is also quality, too. This one's the pork, and I like it is different i no way i wasn't gonna try this one right here this is a candied bacon and peanut butter hot dog you can see all over the top there's a ton of candy bacon on here and you can't really get it but there's definitely a lot of peanut butter on this as well i don't even <laughs> these hot dogs are looking the, i don't know about this one i gotta go over here This really isn't bad. It's not. First of all, again, this is another one of the all pork hot dogs. Oh. I'll put it this way. If you're going to do something that's out of bounds, as peanut butter and candied bacon, it has to be something like that. That's real peanut butter, natural peanut butter. There's a ton of bacon on here, so the peanut butter salty and sweet ratio is on point because of the candied part of the bacon. There's like a maple taste on it that goes well because also with the pork that's kind of salty, you keep getting the salty sweet element. The peanut butter is noticeable, but it's not overpowering. It's still balanced. So it does work. I don't dislike that. The hot dog, too, again, these are quality hot dogs. You can tell they're actually very good. My only complaint, not complaint, if I was going to, for me personally, I would want something on there a little more sweet. Like, even, like, jelly would probably work. Because you can make it weird, make it weird. But I still like that a lot. Like, this is one of those ones I'm like, yo, you got to try this. This is actually pretty good. I like this better than the Bangers and Mash one, believe it or not. I give it a 7.8 out of 10. Now, over here, we have a hot honey pimento cheese dog. Pimento is really popular in the South. You don't see it up here too much but it's like this cheese spread most people had it on like the chick-fil-a
It almost eats like a cream cheese. Salty. Nice with the cream cheese. There is a smattering, big word, of some hot honey on here. This thing's messy. Which gives it a little bit of that sweetness. I have never tried cream cheese on a hot dog, and I keep hearing good things about it. This bangs. It tastes like what people talk about with a cream cheese dog. But with a little bit of extra something on it from the pimento. This is my favorite one so far. I didn't think I would really like this one. But, again, what kind of like that cheese, cream cheese dog. And, again, what makes this really good is these are quality hot dogs. Again, with a nice snap. Nice snap. You can tell they were done on a flat top. Or not a flat top. <laughs> in, the, in the fryer. It's been a long day. That was my favorite one so far. I'll give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. The burger still, for me, is where it's at. But... I would probably do that if I was going to pick anything. And finally, we have what's called a street cart dog. Now, I know from a lot of the, like, Hispanic places that I've gone to that a lot of those do, like, potato sticks on a hot dog. I think there's also underneath here, there's also mayo. You can see in the front, mayo and some ketchup. This is an all-beef hot dog, and you can tell. When you ask for one well done, you can notice how different that is. I would definitely get well done if I were to get all these again, but I wanted to try a difference between both. This one's a little bit more closer to no frills. The potatoes add a little salty, crunchy. Sweet from the ketchup, a little savoriness from the mayonnaise, but the hot dog again is the star of the show. I feel like these are fun to get, but... If I were to go back, the hot dog itself doesn't need all this because they're done right. I would just get kraut and mustard or maybe chili and cheese and take it from there. Or I would ask them just to do the bangers one, but just with the potato. I like potatoes and a hot dog. It's a Jersey thing. But again, all these hot dogs were like $8. And I'm not mad at that because, again, it's, it's a larger one than if you were just getting the dirty water version. That's as close to the no frills that you could get. I still like it. This one was my favorite. And I would give this an 8 out of 10. For me, if I was going back though, the burger and fries, super simple, but well done. And I think stuff like this is a really cool concept because they're not trying to do much, but everything's just quality. Mm. Yeah. So... I think you should try it. This stuff's good. And I like the specialty stuff. Let me know what you think about it. So today, I just want to talk about a, a obscure movie that I watched last night. It's not new. It came out about four or five years ago. And it's called Spree. It was starring the guy who played Steve in Stranger Things. I forget his name. I think it's Joe something, Kiri? Don't quote me on that. Because if I screw it up, I screw it up. And I'm not going back to edit that. But it was a very interesting movie. And just a cool concept. So more or less, I'm not going to... The movie's four years old. So I'll just briefly talk about it. I mean, not in too major spoiler, but just kind of the plot. Um, it's about an influencer, which I hate that word, but he is from the era, what it looks like the movie was set in like 2016. Remember the old school vlogger type of... This is having a comeback recently, but a lot of influencers back then were just like very over the top with how they, they had their presence. Whereas like, I'm not trying to act like I'm cooler than people, but most of the time when I'm on camera, I'm just having a casual conversation. But back then, most people, I consumed this content myself. This was before me. We're very like, they put the camera on and be, you know, the phone and they'd be like, oh, what's up guys? Hey, I'm here. And they were like real, just over the top with it. So he was like that. He had a friend who was really popular and he wasn't popular, but he was trying to be popular. So he got this idea that he was going to start driving a spree, which is a fictitious version of like Uber or um, uh, DoorDash. And he has no viewers, so he starts trying to do more and more outlandish things in order for people to start watching it. And it gets really, really out of hand. And when I say out of hand, crimes are beginning to be committed. People are beginning to be deleted. Things of that nature. But as he's doing it, he's so casual being like, hey, am I getting more viewers yet? 
that it just made me stop and think about how this movie was ahead of its time in predicting that this is what... Now, I'm not saying people... Actually, people do do that. Um, I don't even want to get into that because that's a little too graphic, but there are certain groups of people. I just don't consider myself one of them. I love what I do. I enjoy this, but there's always a moment or not a, a threshold of things that I'm willing to do, you know, and for this. My goal was never to be famous or popular. The fact that, like, this thing over here, which, you know, some people, it's an achievement, but I never once thought that this wasn't a goal of mine, but I'm happy that it exists. You get what I'm saying? So if more happens, more happens. But this is what gets... Some people become influencers or content creators, which is, like, the new word for influencer. Um, their main goal is to be popular. That's always a scary thought. If your only goal is to just be popular by any means necessary, you will begin to start to do some more outlandish stuff. And some of the things that I've seen recently of people doing online just reminded me that this was like a microcosm of that. And this movie isn't new, but there's so many people doing this kind of stuff that it's borderline insane. I can think of one influencer, content creator, whatever you want to call it. Um, I forgot what platform I saw this on, but the guy walked around with two bodyguards and then would try to instigate fights with people knowing you had two bodyguards and they couldn't touch them. Or the people who walk around um, stealing stuff or, or you know, vandalizing things or, you know, pranking people when it goes too far. You know, I'm sure some of you have seen the video, but there was a prank that happened. I think it was in D.C. where a dude, like, ran up on somebody. The dude ended up getting the, you know, the thing pulled out and, and ended up getting... He hit him a couple of times. If you catch what I, you know, I, certain words you can't really say on here, but yeah, he got him a couple of times. And that was like that F around and find out type of stuff that some people, in my opinion, just need, but it's becoming that. And a lot of people I've seen recently that are like streamers are doing all this crazy stuff to be famous. Some of the stuff I don't even want to repeat, but there was another dude that like, he started doing this on YouTube, but he, he basically tricked people into thinking he was terminally ill to be famous. And you know what the crazy part is? He's famous. Both of those people that I've brought up are famous. And part of it is because we're all talking about it. And even myself included right now, which is one of those scary things that, you know, in this movie kind of happens. He does all that and he's becoming famous, but people are scared and they're not sure about it. And then the way it ends, you know, and it kind of just goes into his legacy that he quote unquote left. It's scary, man. But it was a movie that came out so long ago. That I was like, wow, this is so culturally relevant right now. Listen, I love y'all. And I know to some people, the idea of being famous sounds good, but not all fame is good fame. I know some people think even bad publicity is good publicity. Initially, yes. But eventually, if you're a bad person and you do bad things, most people don't get away with it. We're starting to see that from the people who were popping in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 2000s. They're starting to get their comeuppance. So th there's a price that you're going to pay eventually. You're going to have to go to the cash register. And it's going to get taken out. You know, you start doing crazy stuff and whatever. You know, and you look at the Harvey Weinsteins of the world. Or the Puffies of the world. I'm not going into that, by the way. I know people was talking about it. And the allegations and stuff. I don't know enough about it. But I know it's, it's startling and sickening to hear some of the stuff. But Robert Kelly. And you can go on and on. Even if you think you're invincible and you do what you want to. and all, Eventually you're going to get yours. So try to be good people, but that's going to be it for today, man. I just, if you have a chance to watch this movie, um, if you have a, like a fire Amazon, whatever you can get it like free with ads on one of those apps on there. That's free, like a two B kind of deal. Uh, that's what I watched it on, but very interesting to see what people will do to be famous. And considering that, like I am now like in the, the, the business of that, like I'm not famous, but I'm in the business of like, you know, I'm a YouTuber, you know what I mean? So like, it, it, I, I just, I noticed stuff like that. Scary, bro. But that was a real cool movie to watch, but also disturbing. Cool to like, you get what I'm saying when I say cool, like an interesting take on where, how far people are willing to go. Don't be that person. But that's going to end the video. This place was cool, man. I like stuff like this. Like it a lot. And we'll be back tomorrow. More content, man. The hand signs. They made it to YouTube.